This is a homily for the fourth Sunday of Lent, and uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, we had a sense of connection and refreshment and a little bit of lightening, and if my wearing of the rose-colored vestments, you might say pink, uh, makes you uh, laugh or wonder, uh, all the better. But. Uh, a number of years ago, there was a Colombian uh, writer by the name of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who uh, wrote a, a, a number of novels, but one of them was called Love in the Time of Cholera. And uh, I say that this is the uh, Eucharist in the time of coronavirus, with apologies to Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And uh, with that being said, I want to share with you what Bishop N.T. Wright says. Uh, and this again, if you have not watched the video uh, of the service, didn't hear the scripture readings, uh, I would refer you to the bulletin that you received online. So ver uh, the readings are from the first book of Samuel, chapter 16, verses one to 13. Ephesians 5, uh, verses 8 to 14, and the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. So Bishop Wright says, Don't miss the sinister moment towards the end of John's great story. We were told from the beginning that the blind man's condition from birth had nothing to do with previous sins, whether his own or his parents'. <clears throat> that possibility, so prevalent in folk religion and in some more sophisticated systems, is alien to the Judeo-Christian tradition. The Bible regularly refuses to ask why, but rather what. Our instinct is to look for a solution in terms of a theory about the cause or origin of suffering which might then mean we wouldn't need to do anything further. God's is to provide a solution by working towards new creation. The Pharisees, however, don't see it like this. Jesus is a Sabbath breaker. He can't be the Messiah. His mighty works must have a different origin. He is deceiving the people. When pushed in discussion, they give the answer Jesus rejected to the question with which the chapter began. You were born entirely in sins. Your condition proves that you and your parents were in fact sinners, so you can't teach us. There is a distinct echo of Psalm 51 verse 7, but they can't be thinking of that. It would apply to them too. The notion of purity in some sectarian Jewish groups, the Dead Sea Scrolls have the same idea, includes physical wholeness. It was the symbolic world claiming to be the true observance of the Jewish law that Jesus opposed with his fresh vision of that very Jewish vocation to be the light of the world, in verse five. His healings with all their own rich symbolic value posed a deep level challenge. Is this not what it means to be loyal to the God of Israel, to be doing his work of salvation and new creation? If this is so, to cling to the symbols of a different world, a hard exclusive system, is to be truly blind. It is to call down on oneself the very judgment one has pronounced on others. Verse 41. God sees then in a different mode to how we see. And Samuel discovered, as Samuel discovered when examining Jesse's sons, every bit of subversive in action, granted that Saul was still king, as that of Jesus in healing on the Sabbath. Christian obedience can be categorized as a result in terms of learning to see differently. 
The image of light flickers and flashes through Ephesians 5. You are light. You are children of light. So your role, unfashionable, unfashionable though this may be, is to shine into the dark corners of life and show up what is going on. In doing so, you are acting as agents of Christ himself, the world's true light, summoning the dead to life, to wake up to God's new day. <clears throat> this message is all the more important at a time when our culture seems to have forgotten the meaning of shame. Take the reading back a couple of verses. Let no one deceive you with empty words. So to just repeat briefly. If you uh, refer to the homily that Bishop Lee has included, plus his other remarks that uh, are in the uh, email that I sent to you this morning, you'll hear the bishop say uh, much of what Bishop uh, Wright says, and I just want to reiterate that no matter where we find ourselves right now, whether we're at home or we're going to work, uh, because, you know, we need to be there or we have to go grocery shopping or whatever else that we find ourselves having to do, that we will remember first and foremost that Jesus came into the world to save sinners, but even more so, he came to bring light into this world of darkness. He opened the eyes of the blind man so that there would be light. And so remember that we are called, as the reflection said, to be light, to be hope, to be a sense of, of peace and uh, generosity in a time when there are lots of fears, and fears that touch on us as well. But we have to remember that God is with us, that Christ is with us, that we are living members of his body, and that all the ways that we have to connect to one another and to remain connected to each other are of continuing importance. You all have the prayer book. In the back of the prayer book is the lectionary, which gives you the Psalms and the uh, readings for each day that you can do. There's also that section in the prayer book of daily devotions for families and individuals, which are very short versions of the daily office that you can pray together or pray on your own. Um, whatever else that we have sent you, we ask you to you know, take advantage of those things. Uh, Reread the scripture, look at what we sent you for uh, a Wednesday night and that we will also send you this week on, for Wednesday. Um, just so that we have that sense of connection to one another in Christ and so that we can truly then be together even though we're not physically together, the light of Christ to one another and to the world around us. The time of this uh, coronavirus is very dark and foreboding to many people, but it doesn't have to be uh, that way for us who believe. Accept our fear, do what we're supposed to do, but yet also continue to live our life and be signs and be light by our attitude, by our, our generosity, by our kindness, our compassion. Amen.